I think you enjoyed flying the uh, 4S battery pack a little bit more than the 3S, didn't you? Bugger you know, really, really came to life, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And I yeah. tell you, it's it's kind of a, you know, I shamefully have to admit, given the choice between, and I won't get into the review, but don't the 3S versus the 4S, if it, they cater to two different flying styles. Yeah, I like the 4S because it just sure. all the you know the power plant really came to Gives life. Gives you everything you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can see the difference in the video. You're the type of person who likes having it all, and then you choose how much of it you want to use. Yeah, I want I want the full available, and then I just if I want to dial a little bit, then I'll dial it's a little bit. It's just part of your personality. But it does affect the handling of the airframe too, though. Oh, I'm sure so, it does. Yeah. Hey, we'll get into that in pilot experience. Yep. All right, let's start with model characteristics. Build as advertised. Gave it 4.5 out of five, and one of the reasons you had mentioned to me earlier was because of the battery connector. Yeah, you know, it's one of those funny things. Um, you hate for it to take a hit, the model to take a hit on the scoring, but we've got to look at this. It's a plug-in to go kit. What is that type? Plug-in to go. I drop in my receiver, I pick my battery, I'm off and going, I'm ready. Okay. It's supposed to be very simple. The battery connector that ships with this, it's a multiplex ESC, a great ESC, power, 50 amp powerful. Yep. Uh, the motor, hot, the connector is a multiplex connector. Yeah. You look ever around, seen one before? Around, and not in my shop, not in your shop. Exactly. Now, granted, this is you know United States, so we're used to the products that mix yes. around inside of our markets. Sure. Um, overseas, it may be very common. You know, throughout Europe, you may find a lot of of you know multiplex connectors on batteries. Yeah. You don't hear this model is shipped and sold here. Yeah. So, with the without options that are yeah. clearly evident with the, from the manufacturer to say okay here's an adapter to go from this multiplex green six yeah. pin thing you've never seen in your life before over to one of the half a dozen that you can buy at all exactly. your local hobby shops and stuff yeah that may, it forces the the modeler or the the hobbyist to take another step yeah. and it forces them to do something they may not be comfortable with as you had mentioned and that's soldering exactly you know, cutting lead soldering getting your yeah so correct. what happens is you you buy a beautiful plane that's getting great reviews it's at a great price which yeah. i'm jumping ahead but and then you've got a roadblock right going, from the oh, beginning. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. You got well, a where can I get? And yeah, a lot of people migrate towards, yeah. okay, well, I'll buy a battery with that kind of connector on it. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck in yeah. just trying to find a battery with that type of connector on it. You're going to have to switch that connector exactly. out. Exactly. So, yeah. um, that was the only thing. Yeah. I mean, it and seems petty, but I'll be darned if that isn't something that we want well, it people is. to know about. Because for right you and I, bat. soldering an, uh, our favorite connector uh, on the DSC, anyway. we do it all the time anyhow. Yeah. But for a lot of guys, that could be a roadblock, and yep. it's a shame. Yep. But, I mean, it's a shame that, it, like you said, it had to take But a, other than that, the build is... It's a 5 out of 5. Oh, my gosh. Other the build's a flat 5 out of 5. This yep. thing went together so smooth. It snapped together beautiful. Everything lined up on the money. Yep. Instructions were, were very comprehensive. I mean, it's yep. just... It did a great job on that. Well, let's move on to finish. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we scored it at a 5 out of 5, but to be quite honest with you, it was a 4.75 that we rounded up to a 5 because <laughs> the dashboard sticker is peeling. We talked to the manufacturer about um, the canopy and the changes they made from the prototype to yep. the final release, the production version, and they had the inside of the canopy painted black, mm -hmm. but they had foam warping and stuff from the heat. Sure. When you get these things out in a day, inside that canopy, I guarantee you're 150 degrees. Yeah. Uh, maybe even hotter if you've got black interior and there's no venting yeah. at all in it. We see now that after sitting out in the sun at the field, not for length, uh, lengthy periods of time, just between flights, that our canopy, um, our, our dashboard stickers. And you know, out. we're making light of this because it's not that big a deal. I had to throw that in, but this is a beautiful plane. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, Overall, it's it is. From, an, front to back. It's, there but, isn't and, one single area other and, than and that. Rob noticed a sticker too. Well, you know, hey, he's a cockpit guy. He's probably I'm a cockpit uh, guy. He's probably to give the 475 because have a doll head in there oh Ooh, well see now i just vented you and all the other pilots out there <laughs> like pilot figures they're not dolls they're action pilots <laughs> <laughs> not dolls they're action figures action pilots <laughs> action pilots all right but anyhow all joking aside yeah. kurt the finish is gorgeous on this just, that was one of the first things you commented when you got the thing in paint does not me. come off it's just no. incredible it's some of the best and foam, in paint I mean, you're getting foam, foam that is just getting better and better and better yep. i mean this thing has rivet detail on it it's yep. got the exhaust coming out of the bottom it's very tight cell it, it's, uh, it's very nice looking plane yep. very nice gorgeous finish but fix that sticker problem <laughs> Power, we gave it five out of five. You gave it five out of five. Yeah, well, if, if it had been 3S only, I'd have given it a, probably a 3.5 out of five. Um, yeah. But that affects the aerobatic nature of the aircraft by going lighter weight battery. Um, it's more flippy, and I won't get into, you know, yeah. into the- That's uh, ground handling, please. Yeah. One more. But it's, uh, so, so the fact that you can choose to go to a 4S setup, yeah, yeah you got great. I'd have to say probably I'm going to climb out uh, vertical on a fresh pack, a 4S pack. 
it just it just goes nuts. So, so um, yeah. plenty of power. It's a little good. different, you know, feeling with a three blade, three blade prop, and that's not anything that's an anomaly. Well, three a lot blades of guys go two blade yeah. because you get a lot better torque and, and power curve or thrust curve out of the prop sure. uh, up to maximum speed. Three blades it, always have their, their three own. blades will develop their thrust very early on, but then from that point, you know, they get up to that, and then from like the 50% throttle to the 100% throttle, you tend to notice kind of a flat, you know, increase yeah. in thrust, and it's not. It's not real noticeable. You're not it's losing like, it. You're just not gaining. You're anymore. not gaining a whole lot, yeah. and your speed doesn't really change a whole lot. So you kind of you kind of get a halfway into the throttle, or three quarters of the way into the throttle, and you've kind of achieved what you're going to achieve by the mm -hmm. power plant. You can give it that little bit more, but you're just burning more air, burning sure. extra wattage, just not necessary. Yeah. Um, but even on, on either 3S or 4S, same prop, you don't have to change anything out. Um, it had ample power for what you wanted to do. Yeah. based on the weight change for the setup, and we'll get into that a little bit further. Now, Kurt, I noticed on this prop they've got it to scale variable pitch, but I, I think this is fixed, right? It's fixed, yeah. You okay. can probably cut it off and re-glue it. No, don't do that. I'm just, just don't, don't, don't listen to him. He'll get don't you in listen trouble. To him. All right. <laughs> Ground handling, 4.5 out of 5. Yeah. Um, it's What you'll find is, is um, on the 3S setup, as you come in to set up your land, if you've got any crosswind at all, it's going to buck and kick in a little bit. It's going to be it's going to be a little bit a little bit rolly, mm -hmm. um, and you're going to kind of fight yourself into that into the runway. You've got plenty of authority on all control services, but it you know it can get a little bit dancy when you're bringing it down in. Yeah. Um, uh, it's the forest does help. It definitely you know add adding that extra forward weight, and the the big thing with weight distribution with the different battery choices that impact the model so much is we set our CG. Uh, I think in the video it was 80, 80 millimeter. Is where it balanced out to, which we've got 76 to 86 millimeter for our range on our on our CG. Right in the middle there. We're right in the middle, which normally is you know great, fine, wonderful. It felt it felt right at the edge of being tail heavy when we flew it with a 3S, sliding that pack all the way forward. Um, as you get into ground handling, then of course being so close to that aft CG, you're just, you're right on the money. Um, you know what that feels like when you come to ground effect. Oh, it just, sure. it just, it's yeah. just like, come on, get down, get down. You want to get it down on the ground and it just yeah. wants to dance. So we had pretty heavy crosswind on our testing day. And uh, it, it was a handful coming in a little bit. Uh, and it was dead. We kept landing at dead crosswind, oh, dead sure. crosswind, about six, seven mile an hour. Yeah. Um, but you could do it. You just had to bring it a little bit hotter and set the mains down and, yeah. and uh, bring it in. But uh, on the ground itself, the steering, uh, steer, the tail wheel is fantastic. I mean, you can just cut tight little circles on high rates, just round and round and round. So it, it does a great job taxing around. And we've seen a lot of foam. Another high point for the extra 300S. A lot of foam planes that just don't handle well on the ground. No. They're either they're either understeering in the tail, or the linkage is kind of hokey, or it's just yep. like oh, it's you know, weak. It's, you get it's like an fold over. Yeah, yeah, it's like oh, yeah. I had to put a steerable tail wheel on it, but it was an afterthought. This yeah. is a very positive response, and you have a lot of great control with the tail wheel on the ground. So. Durability five out of five. Yeah, uh, we did have a little nose over incident when we were test flying it. And well, that's it what knocked down. the sticker loose. Then Probably I have to take was, back yeah. everything I said. <laughs> It came down heavy on the on the horizontal stabilizer, and you've got a full hinge rod that goes all the way through. And what it actually did was bent the hinge rod at the tip, so we just cranked it back at the field, and it was right back up where it needed to be. So um, we did test its durability, and it's EPO yeah. foam, which is yeah. the whole goal with this type of plane, is it's durable, it's tough, it's going to handle some some impacts and sure. stuff. But all right, let's move on to pilot experience. Flight is advertised five out of five. Uh, you have a note on here, interesting CG. Interesting, yeah, oh yeah, interesting CG. Um, we talked about CG briefly before. Having it at 80 millimeter, um, when we took it up, first takeoff with a 3S pack, 2200, 2250 milliamp 3S pack. We took it off and um, and it uh, had to put some down trim in, wanted to climb. So put some, which kind of, you know, mm -hmm. back aft CG, oh, yeah. you're all the way in yeah. the line, it's going to feel like that. So. We used a little, little forward trim, got the nose to level out on it, and uh, um, flew it around and you know, got used to that CG placement, then went to the 4S, because he had to test both of them. Threw the 4S in there, and the odd thing was, even though we've moved, we had moved the CG almost 10 millimeter, no trim changes. Really? Yeah, no trim at all. It was, huh. it was, it was the same exact plane to fly, which to me was, I'm not an aeronautical engineer, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing, all I know is is that was nice because you're yeah. going to fly depending on how you want to fly the 300s. Exactly. Either light and like I said, flippy, more yeah. aerobatic. You're going to do more things lower to the ground, and you're going to do more uh, more low speed, high thrust maneuvers, sure. which are more 3D ish. 
This is not a true 3D plane, so I don't think you're going to go out and do full hardcore 3D no. and a lot of hovering and Harrier maneuvers. You know, Harriers are pretty much off the table. Um, uh, torque rolls and things like that are not going to quite cooperate like you want them to. Yeah. It's not a 3D foamy. Um, it's it's a it's a high aerobatic sport flyer. Sure. And that's really what it does really yeah. well. But you're going to get more of that that light and airiness at the 3S, and more of that power, that that hard driving, clean line, uh, bigger air aerobatics uh, performance out of the 4S, without having to mess with your weight, yep. your battery placement. Just shove that sucker as far forward as you can against the firewall. Once it stops, lock it down, fly it. Yeah. Pull out that battery, go back to a 3S, fly it. That's yep. you know how practical that is. Yes. Because you do it. You get out there and you have to, oh wait wait where's this battery come out? Let me check the yeah. flip it over and check the CG and. Um, it was very forgiving on its on its uh, battery placement um, or battery changes in, yeah. in additional or, or uh, and we uh, always check the, the CG before we fly every plane yep. even if we just put another battery back in it with same battery yeah we always check but it has good tail authority it'll hold their lines well um, you have good knife edge authority uh, inverted of course it's a mid wing aerobat it flies as well inverted as it does right side up um, with a 3s battery you flip it over you don't have to touch the elevator yeah it's just Flip it over and let go of the stick, and it just stays straight as wow. uh, straight and flat. So, uh, has good characteristics overall. A yep. little bit washy in the tail with the 3S because uh, it's it's a little more tail heavy. Sure. Um, it gets that kind of, uh, and, and you've experienced this before too. And I, I, I'm probably getting a bunch of comments on this video because of my lack of ability to describe it more eloquently. But uh, you get kind of a washiness right as you get towards stall, uh, and when you're doing some downwind turns, it, it, I think it's more due to the CG placement at that point than yeah. it is anything else. Um, it gets just a little bit washy on the tail. Sure. And then if you're pulling a tight uh, snap or a tight maneuver, the tail wants to follow through a little further than you expect it to. So, and again, I think that's more to do with the CG. Um, all those tendencies went away when we went to the 4S setup. Okay. So, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, when you're doing maneuvers, you do with the 4S faster power plant, more powerful power plant. Um, you're not going to be falling in that situation anyway. Sure. Um, and likewise, when you're running a 3S with lighter in the nose, heavier in the tail, um, you're going to want it real aerobatic and flippy so you can do that stuff and take advantage exactly. of it, more thrust vectoring. So it, it just had that characteristics that I noticed, which if yes. anything on 3S makes this a more challenging plane to fly than on 4S. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. And that's the end of the pilot experience. Yeah, okay. Well, no, it's not because we still have four more categories. Well, the first one. Go ahead. Flight time. You gave it a five out of five. You, you got eight to nine minutes. Eight to nine minutes, 2250 milliamp, 3S battery, eight to nine minutes. 2700 milliamp, 4S. 12 plus minutes. Oh, did you really? Oh, yeah, because yeah. it's 2700 milliamp, 4S. You aren't into the throttle as sure. much to be able to fly sure. it. Now, if you were just hammering the heck out of it, which you shouldn't anyway, uh, shouldn't be full throttle like that all the time, you know, you can cut into that. But we had some yeah. great run times with it. Well, that's good. Very good run times. Field size, uh, park or flying field, yeah. obviously. This is either a large park, air park, you know, yep. like if a park that allows people to fly electric airplanes. Yep. Um, it's it's uh, barely makes the park classifications from a from a wingspan perspective, 48 inches or less, yeah. 47.2. Weight, it's within it. Um, uh, so large park or you're going to have fun at a flying field with this. Yeah, just make know. sure you're doing it on the weekend. This a weekend or wow, it's man, weekend. we were full of it. This that was like bad. Portability, four out of five. Yeah, four out of five. Um, we talked about the fact that you're not really going to take the wings off. It's two screws inside. Yeah. Easily accessed. You just go right down through the hatch, removable hatch, and you can pop them out. But you got to feed those aileron leads up through a little access port, and it's not the quickest and easiest to get it assembled and disassembled. But it's also small enough. This it's still fits within the realm of a back under seat. Under 48 inches, yeah. you can stick it in the back seat. And yeah. it's foam. It's going to handle getting stuck on its nose and bumping the wingtips. You're not yep. going to tear anything up. So it right. still remains very portable. Skill level, intermediate. Definitely. I agree with their assessment. High tech listed this as an intermediate uh, qualification, yep. and I, I would agree. Well, anytime you step it. up into any, any aerobatic airframe, you should not be trying to get your chops. You should better yeah. have your orientation down. You better have the basics because you're going to get yourself in maneuvers that you've got to do some quick thinking to pop back out of. And I'll tell you, small air bats are not easy to handle. No. They're not easy handling planes. Everything happens way too fast. Yeah, it has a, a tremendous uh, axial tendencies to yep. it. And um, uh, whereas larger air bats, we've talked about how easy they are to take off and land. Yeah. You know, when you get into the in the 30cc and stuff like that, they're very forgiving. Uh, when you get into the foam, the smaller foam yeah. aerobatic planes, they can be a little bit of a handful. Oh, well, they're so um, responsive. Not, yeah, if yeah. you aren't comfortable, if you're not an intermediate pilot. Yeah, and you're not so, going to fly this on Expos. Oh, yeah, you are. Well, I don't. I mean, like you would have set up for a uh, for a trainer or anything. Oh, yeah, oh, I yeah. do. 
I, I actually run 30% expos across the whole thing, um, even on high rates. High rates, 30% expo, low rates. There's guys that fly no expo. Yeah. There's guys that fly, you know, no rates. It's just full on. Different flying styles, but heck yeah, dial those expos and it does help. But you're right. It's not going to be so soft and gender. Yeah. And gender. Yeah. And tender or gentle. Wow. Yeah, it's all over the place. <laughs> it's not going to be so gentle in the air uh, in terms of damping. Goes, yeah. <laughs> That uh, that you're not going to find it. It it's you know it flies like a high wing. It's yeah, it flies yeah. like a plane. that doesn't have a high. That response. was the point I was getting to. But this you, is a root. This is a root to tip. Hamburg. You know, root to tip yeah. control surface. So yeah. no matter what you do, it's going to be responsive. It's going to be responsive. It's going to yeah. react to what you're doing. And you've also got you know you've got more than just a just an aft control surface on yeah. your elevator. You're actually carving in with your front tab. So exactly. Uh, and your your uh, rudder as well. So which gives you much tremendous more response. control. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. off a of prop wash, you can do some amazing things. But yeah. um, that's it, man. I think so. That's the review of the Weekender. Uh, new line by High Tech, new series. They have well, multiple planes what, coming out. If this is the uh, indication of what it's going to be like, this is a very nice plane. The, the absolute summary is the value of this plane, its capabilities, yep. its durability, its performance, its finish, its build quality, even the packaging. Yeah. Everything about this plane at $219.99 is is fantastic. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. And it, it started when I opened up the box, and it carried all the way through yep. to flying it out at the field. It's, I don't know how they do it, to be honest with you. I mean, the servos are smooth as glass. You think you, you think you bought forty dollars servos and popped them in there. They're, they're, yep. you know, there's so many things about it from head to toe yeah. that you go, how can I even sell it and make profit? Well, they don't care about making money. These loads. They sell loads. So Let's if you finishes. want to see the full review, get to our website at tubefly.com. For mobile users, you can go to rcflightsource.com, download our mobile app, and take our content with you on the go. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.